Good afternoon. I have a very important video I'd like to share with you, a video about lying, and I, and I pray that you will not uh, quickly turn this aside. Uh, lying seems to be a very, it's very commonly known that lying is wrong. It's a hurtful thing. We don't like to be lied to, and we don't want to lie. Obviously, Matthew 7, 12 says, you know, Jesus is saying that, as you would have others do to you, so do to them. We also know that we will give an account of every idle word we, we will speak. Let me read this. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the days of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. This is from Matthew 12, 36 and 37. I'm also going to include a few verses in the description then, just a few of the many regarding lying, in case you'd like to look them up, uh, preferably in your King James Bible. We know that lying is of the devil. From John 8, 44, this is not the entire verse, but from it, in part, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you shall do. He is a liar, and the father of it. I don't know why it is that lying has become so prolific. Uh, I have to ask myself how that is. For example, if someone were to say to you, if a friend would say to you, maybe they're agreeing to meet with you or pick something up, they say, oh, okay, I will stop by. I'll stop by tomorrow afternoon. And then they never stop by. They never call. Now they have lied to you. Maybe the next day they stop by and everything is all right. They are your friend. You, you think nothing of it. You say nothing of it. But it was a lie. What I'm saying is we've become so used to this, it's become so ingrained within us, we don't even think that we are lying when we say these things. But we need to remember that we are actually talking to Jesus and not talking to someone else. In Matthew 25, 40, he also tells us that uh, when you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. One thing that I have picked up, I have seen this in society, certainly in America, and I think it's pretty, pretty well known in the world. Uh, there are a lot of lies in politics. When someone is running for office, they will promise many things, and they will never fulfill them. They will say what you want to hear in order to get your vote. In fact, it used to be somewhat of a joke, we might say, uh, reflecting on someone, oh, he ought to run for office, or he would be good in politics, because he's saying what people want to hear. But of course, he's lying. When we make a commitment to someone, we need, uh, we need to, to stand by it. Uh, the scripture says, The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are, are exalted. This is Psalm 12.8. And so if we think about it like this, then the way the leaders are is the way the people become. And when we see that the leaders are continually lying about what they do, then we tend to lie about what we're going to do. And we're not being held accountable by men, but we will be held accountable by God in the day of judgment. And that is what we would like to avoid. I have known one person that I have dealt with here who has actually said, uh, it was kind of a trite saying on one of the social media platforms. And what she said is, if I apologize to you, it doesn't mean I am wrong. I just value our friendship more than my ego. So in other words, she has said that she will lie to you, but she agrees with you. She has put her relationships above the truth. Jesus did not do this, did he? Think of how terrible it would be to hold back the truth from someone who needs the gospel because it might offend them. But this is the very nature of what I'm seeing all around me. I saw it, I saw it in America. I saw it in Tanzania and Zambia and now in Botswana. And I would just like to alert Christians of this, because I think this is kind of a last days epidemic, and judgment is coming. But I want you to hear these, these scriptures. There are three scriptures in particular I want to focus on, from Revelation 21 and 22. Three times in the last two chapters of the Bible, God tells us that lies will have no part in his kingdom. Lies and liars will not be a part of it. And this is kind of a, this should be a sobering thing for us. Let me read this. From Revelation 21, 8. 
He that overcometh shall inherit all things. It's actually verse 7 and 8. I apologize. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's pretty strong. All liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Now listen to Revelation 21.7. This is talking about the new Jerusalem. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, and but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Once again, God goes out of his way to say liars will not be a part of his kingdom. And then in Revelation 22.15, again talking about within the New Jerusalem and what's not within the New Jerusalem. For without, that is without the city, are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Brethren, I just have to warn you about this. Are you a liar? Have you been lying? The least we can do is clean up our act and talk straight. Don't say things that you don't mean. Follow through on them. The world is watching. And you understand that all liars have their part in the lake of fire. I just want to say one other thing. Sometimes I think people flip over the verse, all liars have their part in the lake of fire. Because everyone lies. So what is a liar? Lies can be forgiven, right? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, forgive me for my lies. Please help me not to lie anymore. But if you are continually lying, and like this friend that I have spoken to you of, she actually would not accept the fact that God has told her not to lie. She says she must lie in some situations. This is someone who is not saved. They do not know the Lord. This must come under his headship. He has made it clear. And so liars are those who continually espouse lies. They think it's good to lie sometimes. But if we have lied, God, lied, God will forgive us. But we can't keep going back to it. Please take this to heart and share it with other brethren so they won't fall into this trap. May God bless.